Shalom Yasharala. Welcome. Giving all praise and glory to the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob for everything as he was be praised. Hello, Yah, this glorious name for everything. Another day closer to the kingdom. We got next forever, never, never. Got to work to get there, though. It ain't just given to us just because we got it. Now, we got to work toward it. So I want to go on to these scriptures and bring some edification for us as a nation. And bringing us closer. And looking at our past. Looking at our present and our future. Within this lesson. And dealing with mistakes we made. Mistakes we can't make again. Because the Bible is an example. And our ammunition, ammunition. For a better tomorrow. A better future. So we always, always as always. We're going to start off with Colossians 3.17. And whatsoever you do in word or deed. Do all by Hashem. Which is in the name of the Lord and Savior. Give me thanks to the Most High and the Father. That's how we thank the Most High by Him. Because He said no man come to the Father but by Him. So you ask anything in my name. I would do it. That the Father can be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name. I would do it. You love me. Keep my commandments. Do what I say. Do. Follow my rules and regulations. Are the rules and regulations of my Father. You see, so it's always going back to the most high, because he's going to be all in all. That's right. So, we're going to look at uh, Ezekiel 36. 36. Because I said, we're going to go and looking at what we have done, and looking at what we have done, and what we have to do, that's going to create a better future for us as the Israelites. Hope you got your pen and pad and have your Bibles ready. Let's go into it. Ezekiel 36 and 31. It said, Then shall you remember your own evil ways, Yasharala, and your doings that were not good, the things that we done that was evil, which was contrary to the laws of the Most High, in your doings that were not good. The only thing good is the most high. And the most high's laws. And shall loaf yourselves in your own sight. For your iniquities. And for your abominations. For be feeling bad. For breaking the most high's laws. That's commandments and being wicked. See not for your sakes. Do I this said the most high power. Be it known unto you. Be ashamed to confound it. Be ashamed to be confused. Yasharala, for your own ways. Oh, house of Israel. See? So, let's look at uh, Ezekiel 21. Ezekiel 21. And we're going to start at verse 1. It says, And the Most High, through the word, and the word of the Most High came unto me, saying, So the Most High's word came to Ezekiel. Most have a voice. And we know who's the word of the most high. I'm going to shout shot. Hope that ain't too far going over your head. But he says, hey, and the word of the most high came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face toward Jerusalem, and drop thy word toward the holy places, and prophesy against the land of Israel. It's saying prophesy against the land of Israel. And say, to the land of Israel, thus said the Most High, Behold, I am against thee, and I will draw forth my sword out of his seat. Remember, we got. That's why he said, Look at your evil ways, look at your iniquity, look at the things you have done wrong, look at how you have broken my commandments. He said, I'm gonna bring out his sword, bring his. We'll, we'll draw forth my sword out of his sheath, and will cut off from thee. The righteous and the wicked. So this, I'm looking at this like when you know people look at we bring forth the truth, and we say, Nah, this this was written going to happen to the nations outside of the twelve tribes of Israel. Everybody start flipping out. But this is what the Most High did to His chosen people, who He's only people that He say he love. He said, Jacob have I love. He said, Jacob have I love. That's it. I'm going to say he loved nobody else but Jacob. Jacob's the forefather of the 12 tribes of Israel. And this is what he said he's going to do to the righteous and the wicked. Understand this. 
just in case you want to think there's some righteous people in other nations, when the most had bring the judgment upon them, this is what he did to us. Ain't nothing new under the sun. It's going down just like this. Because it went down like this. Because of what the wicked of our people did. You just We just read it. Think about your evil ways and your evil doings, your iniquities that we've done. Ezekiel 23 and 21 and 3. And say to the land of Israel, thus said the Most High, Behold, I am against thee. The land? Not against the land, it's against the people that's on the land. A lot of times he used these analogies for us to understand. You know, those that read it, they might say, well, look at the land. Oh, he's mad at the land. No, listen to what he said. I am against thee, and I and will draw forth my sword out of his sheath, pulling that sword out of the sheath, and will cut off from thee the righteous and the wicked. Just talking about people, the children of Israel, gonna cut off from the land of Israel the righteous and the wicked. Saying then that I will cut off from thee, from the land of Israel, the righteous and the wicked. Therefore shall my sword go forth out of his sheath. Against all flesh, all flesh, not no land, but all flesh, we the Israelites, from the south to the north, from the from the bottom to the top, from the south to the north, that all flesh may know that I, the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, have drawn forth my sword out of his sheep. It shall not return anymore. Sigh, therefore, he say, sigh, therefore, thou son of man, with the breaking of of thy loins breaking us down and with bitterness sigh before their eyes and it shall be when they say unto thee wherefore sigheth thou thou sh et, that thou shalt answer for the tidings because it cometh and every heart shall melt every mind gonna melt and all hands shall be feeble you will have no strength. And every spirit shall faint. The spirit is just fainted. And all knees shall be weak as water. Behold, it cometh. He let you know it's coming. It cometh and it came. And shall be brought to pass, said the Most High. Prophesying. Letting them, told Ezekiel, tell them. This is what I'm going to do. <laughs> Kick them out the land. The righteous and the wicked. So don't get it twisted. This is ammunition. Against anybody want to say there's a problem with what the most high judgment going to be on someone else. But being wicked as ever. And you think some of them are good. Well, some of them ain't nobody good but the most high and his laws. But I mean, my mistake. <laughs> but thinking that they all right or they righteous. But they're another, of another nation. No. The most I did this to the righteous and the wicked. You see here? Kicked us out the land behind what the wicked done. So yes, when you say I didn't do it, yeah, you got to pay for whatever the wicked done and doing. Believe this. Oh yeah. So look at Isaiah 13 and 9. Isaiah 13 and 9. Behold, the day of the Most High cometh. The day of the Most High is coming. And of my shepherd shall coming. Cruel. You hear them say cruel. Both with wrath and fierce anger. To lay the land desolate. And he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. See. For what the, what the uh, sinners did. The ones that broke the Most High's laws. We just read. The righteous end we had to pay for it. He made the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. See? That's why you look at that. He took the righteous along with the wicked. The wicked did all they did. The righteous had to pay the same price as the wicked. We all went down. When he brought us down, he brought us all down. Like he's going to bring down these nations. All of them going down. As he did his, that's how he operate. You have no respect to person. You only have respect to Israel.
Jeremiah 32 and 37. Jeremiah 32 and 37. Behold, I will gather them out of all countries, whither I have driven them in mine anger. He said, he's going to gather us back. Well, he drove, drove us out in his anger. He ain't do it. He ain't do it. No, 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 no nice, emotional spirit. You know what he said? Behold, I will gather them out of all countries whither I, where the most I have driven them in mine anger and in my fury and in great wrath. This is what he did to us. So how did it, I'm, I'm just giving you analysis of what the Most High did to Jacob, who we say he loved. And y'all want to act like you don't deserve the judgment that's coming to these other nations. And following everything but the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Listen. He said, Behold, I will gather them out of the, all countries whither I have driven them in mine anger and in my fury and in great wrath. And I will bring them again unto this place and I will cause them to dwell safely. That's the good news. And they shall be my people. He said, We're going to be his people. And I will be their power. That's good news. That sounds good to me. He said, I will give them one heart. I'm going to give them one mind. We're going to have one mind. And one way. Only one way. Ain't going to be no division and doctrines, this, that, the third. It's going to be one mind and one way. That they may fear me. You know that? See, that's why we look at now all of you that's been in this truth for some while and anyone that's learning should know Judges 5.11. We're rehearsing the righteous acts. So, you know, I, I always go into fear means to be afraid, to be scared, first and foremost, to do what he say do. You just heard what he said. What did he say? He said, verse 37, Behold, I will gather them out of all countries whither I have driven them in my anger. Get some love and, and, and love spirits out of this. All you emotional people out there. He said, them in my anger and in my fury and in great wrath. And don't think you're going to run to Amashiach Kavashah who you call Jesus Christ going to get some love. He said, I and my father are one. They agree. You think he's going to go against them? He's the word of the most high. You see, look at verse 33, chapter 33. Well, we go to, well, yeah, 33 is closer. Moreover, the word of the Most High came unto Jeremiah. <laughs> so, you, <laughs> so you think you're going to run to hell when he said, look, I'm right here. You know, I'll cover the volume of the book. So he's bringing the word of the Most High. Isn't he the word of the Most High? Oh, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> Jeremiah 32 and <laughs> 38. He said, And they shall be my people, and I will be their power, and I will give them one heart. He will give us one mind. The heart is the mind. And one way. Only one way. It's only one way. That they may fear me forever. You know that? We're going to fear the most high forever. For the good of them and of their children after them. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them. The Twelve tribes of Israel. That I will not turn away from them. You know that? He's never going to turn his face away from us again. He's not a man that he should lie. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them. He's going to make an everlasting contract or agreement with us, the 12 tribes of Israel, that I will not turn away from them to do them good. But I will put my fear in their hearts. He's going to put his fear in our minds. So if we're rehearsing the righteous acts of the Most High, in this, these different lands where we've been scattered in, why you can't see this and start 
being ready for what he's going to do if you're the elect. You're the chosen. This is what he's going to do. This is why we're supposed to be prepared for this. So if you're against it, then when he comes, he's not going to be dealing with you. You should already be working on having the fear of the most. I was the beginning of knowledge. But I will put my fear in their hearts. And he's going to put the fear of the Most High in our minds. That they shall not depart from me. Say, yeah. I like that, yeah. You know, you know, that's a brother, yeah. I will rejoice over them to do them good. And I will plant them in this land. He said, I will plant them in this land. Don't let no man tell you that to follow him, to be planted in the land. Most I said, I will plant them in this land assuredly with my whole heart, with his whole mind, and with my whole soul. That's the most high. The most I said for Thus said the most high, like as I have brought all this great evil upon this people. You know, a great evil upon us with this fury and wrath and indignation and anger. So will I bring upon them all the good that I have promised them. I mean, that's, that's the good news gospel right there. That's our future. That's what's so important in working toward. Yasharala. Jeremiah 16 and 14. Jeremiah 16 and 14. Therefore, behold, the days come, said the Most High, that it shall no more be said, the Most High liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. It ain't going to be said no more. The Most High liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. When he brought all those plagues upon the Egyptians to make himself a name. Open up the Red Sea where we as the Israelites could walk across on dry ground. Drown Pharaoh and his army. And all their chariots. And we've seen their bodies come up on the shore. Bought down manna. Wafers that taste like whatever we wanted. Gave us food out of nowhere. Miracles. Signs and wonders. And we still didn't follow him. But he said, hey, therefore, behold, the days come, said the Most High, that it shall no more be said, the Most High liveth, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Most High liveth, that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. And I think we are in North America. From the land of the north and from all the lands whither he have driven them. And I will bring them again. I will bring them again. I will bring them again. The Most High is going to bring us again into their land. This is what he's going to do. That I gave unto their fathers. You better hear that I and respect that I. Because this is what the Most High said he's going to do. Not no man. Ain't no man going to save us. You better read your old the curses. Deuteronomy 28 and 29. Ain't no man going to save us. That's the most I, you know, it's a fear between the fathers in the hands of the living power. Look, look at uh, Isaiah 60, 21. When you gather us together, thy people, your people also shall be all righteous. I mean, we're going to follow the laws of the Most High because the Mashiach of Shai is going to be there to teach us to be perfect in the laws of the Most High to the utmost 
Thy people also shall be all righteous. Isaiah 60, 21. They shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting. You know? The most I going to do this. Not no man. The most I said the branch of my planting. The work of my hands. That I may be glorified. You know? Not no man going to be glorified, but the Most High going to be glorified. Ain't about no man. It's about the Most High. He the one going to be all in all. That's what this is all about. You're going to go to whatever we're going to go to, and the Most High going to be all in all. A little one shall become a thousand. You have a thousand babies. A little one going to become a thousand. And a small one, a strong nation. I, the Most High, will hasten it in his time. He's going to do this. So you don't have a mindset to look at what he's, a little one going to become a thousand. Oh, no, I'm not going, I'm not, I'm not going to have no thousand children. How is it going to be you? How is it going to be you? Or women that don't, 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 you going you gonna to have a thousand babies? What woman out there gonna have a thousand babies? Say, that's one man. A little one shall become a thousand. Say, you're gonna hasten in his day. It's the mindset. Some of you don't have to even deal with that. But you better have a mindset to believe it. That's the problem with our people. A lot of our people, you don't really put yourself here for everything that's written. We gotta eat the whole roll, baby. Everything and you gotta accept it, or else it's not talking about you. You ain't gonna be there. You can't how you expect to be there when you against what he says is gonna happen. Come on, Yasharala. We gotta do better than what we're doing. Isaiah 66 and 7. Before she travailed, before she, her contractions happened, in having a baby. She brought forth. Baby came before she even had any contractions. She brought forth. Before her pain came, before any pain came, she was delivered of a man child. Who have heard such a thing? Who have heard? Who ever heard such a thing? He said. Who have seen such things? Who? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Is the earth made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation, that's what it's talking about, the nation of Israel, or shall a nation be born at once? No. For as soon as Zion travailed, as soon as Zion travailed with the, the pains like a woman having a baby, only the woman know. You women know about this. You just said, hey, one gonna bring forth a thousand. Now, I ain't never met a woman that says she gonna have a thousand babies, but you know, it's talking about as a woman travail, all you that have babies, and y'all felt those contractions and those that pain that happens before that baby comes. Only women know that. You say what? See, it's worse than a bad toothache. It's the worst pain you can have. Unimaginable. But is this what he said? For as soon as Zion travailed, as soon as we felt that pain and agony she brought forth her children see she brought forth her children shall I bring to the birth and not cause to bring forth shall I bring to the birth and not cause the baby to come forth said the most high shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb up so the head and the body can't come out. Said thy power. Rejoice ye with Jerusalem and be glad with her, all ye that love her. See, a lot of people don't love us, just say. He said, Rejoice with us. We the children of Israel. Be glad with us, all that love us. Rejoice for joy with her, all ye that mourn for her. See. That ye may suck 
and be satisfied with the breast of her consolations that ye may milk out and be delighted with the abundance, abundance, abundance of her glory. That means beyond our imagination. Our glory is going to be beyond our imagination. We just got to be prepared for it. We got to make ourselves ready for it. Continually, every day. Not just some day on the Sabbath, you just turn it, go into like, like Clark Kent, going into the phone booth and come out Superman. Nah, every day. You got to work toward this. The Sabbath is the most high day that we come together and we go over this word. But every day, if you're an Israelite, you're an Israelite. You got to be working toward it continually. Jeremiah 12 and 10. Jeremiah 12 and 10. Many pastors have destroyed my vineyard. Say many pastors have destroyed his vineyard. They have trodden my portion underfoot. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. <coughs> destroyed us. They have made it desolate. And being desolate, it mourneth unto me. You know what he said? <coughs> being desolate, it's mourning unto the most high. The whole land is made desolate. Most I said he's going to do this. But no, we want to do it our way. Like people, now, nah, I'm going to do it my way. I've been doing it this way. You don't realize the most I jacking them because most I, he the one that wounded heal. But you want to do it your way, then you be sick. You be going through all these changes and you go to uh, the, the practicing uh, medical practitioners participate in practicing medicine. And they can't do nothing. But just pacify the situation. They ain't cure, curing nothing. The most high the one that wound, the most high the one that heal. But see, you got the pastors, like he said. They have destroyed his vineyard. They have trodden my portion underfoot. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. They have made it desolate, and being desolate, it mourneth unto me. Hear that? The land is mourning unto the most high. The whole land is made desolate because no man left it to heart. No man laying it to the mind of thinking, man, if we do this, the most high going to jack us up. He going to kick us out the land and we're going to be in captivity, slavery, and bondage. We're going to be oppressed. We're going to deal with white supremacy. We're going to deal with Arab supremacy. <coughs> the Egyptian supremacy. Persian and Mede supremacy over and over again but not following what the most High told us to do and here we are now in the situation that we're in now why because he told us he's gonna do this it's already he's this is what i'm gonna do you hear the, say the land morning go to baruch the fourth chapter go to baruch in the pocket go to baruch the fourth chapter and verse 20 Baruch, the fourth chapter, the 20th verse. Let's deal with it right there. Baruch 4 and 20. I have put off the, this is the land talking. Baruch 4 and 20. I have put off the clothing of peace and put upon me the sackcloth of my prayer. Sackcloth is when you're crying to the Most High. And it's a letter low estate. Very, very humble. 
with a broken and contrite spirit. The land is speaking. I have put off the clothing of peace and put upon me the sackcloth of my prayer. I will cry unto the everlasting in my days. I mean, look, you tell me this don't go right along with what, what we're seeing here? Jeremiah 12 and 11, they have made it desolate, just the land, made the, des the land desolate. And being desolate, the land being desolate, it mourneth unto me. What do you think mourneth me? Most I let us know, the land is crying unto the most high. The whole land is made desolate because no man layeth it to heart. Because no man layeth it to his mind to think to do what's right, to remain in the land. When he told us he's going to kick us out and make the land desolate. And it's desolate. Fast land of Judah. Just, I've showed you pictures of it. You can go for miles and miles. Nothing's there. Baruch 4 and 20. Go your way, oh my children. Go your way. For well, I am left desolate. That's 19. That's the land. Just as we see in here. I have put off the clothing of peace and put upon me the sackcloth of my prayer. I will cry unto the everlasting in my days. As we say in the land this morning, cry unto the most high in his days. Be of good cheer, O my children. Cry unto the most high, Yahweh, and he shall deliver you from the power and hand of the enemies. Come on. Go to Luke. 168. The land teller got to tell us what to do. Maybe we'll see. guess he's the most high field. Maybe they'll listen to the land. Won't listen to me. Won't listen to the most high. Won't listen to the men that he brought forth to bring the message to the people. So what is the land telling us? Luke 168. Bless me, the most high power of Israel. For you have visited and redeemed his people. As we done read, and I raised up in horn, which is a power of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, in the tribe of Judah, which King David came from, for Mashiach I was shot. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we, twelve tribes of Israel, should be saved from our enemies. You know? The land told us. Now, here it is in the New Testament, that we should be saved, just being saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. What the land tell us? What the land tell us? Luke 4 and 21. Be of good cheer, O my children. Cry unto the Most High. And he shall deliver you from the power and hand of the enemies. Cry to the Most High, he's going to bring salvation. That's being saved. Power, rulership, and authority to the children of Israel, to the 12 tribes of Israel. Solution. You better read Judges 10 and 10 down. Solution. Well, say I have no pity on us. You think you're going to go to the Most High with your pride but, prideful butt? Man. Better humble yourself. Y'all better hear what's, what, what works. Jeremiah 6 and 3. Better hear what works. I ask the most I for solutions. If you got something better than this, give it to me. From this word. I know the spirit of the most high has showed me this over and over and over again. Here we are again. Bringing it the same. Only somebody else saying it. Another man is saying it. Jeremiah. Six and three. The shepherds. With their flocks. Shall come unto her. They shall pitch their tents. Against her round about. They shall feed everyone. In his place. 
Prepare ye war against her. Arise. You know, most I say, prepare ye war against her. Arise. And let us go up at noon. Give me the time and everything. Woe unto us. Woe unto us. Destruction unto us. For the day goeth away. The day going away. For the shadows of the ever of the evening are stretched out. Arise and let us go by at night and let us destroy her palaces. What's happening to us? Verse 13. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. From the least to the greatest, everyone's given to covetousness. Want everything that they can imagine and can't have. And some can't have. Just greedy dogs. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. And from the prophet, even unto the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. If you ain't dealing with, thus said the most high, according to what this Bible is really talking about, you're dealing falsely. That's why he took the righteous and the wicked into captivity. Because just like you look at the religion, what are they doing? They open up the Bible, they're not dealing with, go tell my people Israel. They talking about them Israelites back there, telling you that you a Gentile. Now, that's why he say the shepherds, man, you're going to catch it. Shepherds is over the sheep. You got something for you. You better recognize and repent and start looking at what it is that is important. 2 Kings 25. 2 Kings, the 25th chapter. Let's start at verse 1. Second Kings twenty five and one. And it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month. You notice how he identifying the months and the days. Ninth year of his reign. Zedekiah. In the tenth month. In the tenth day of the month, that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came, he and all his hosts, all his army, against Jerusalem and pitched against it. Pitched against it. And they built forts against it round about. So they built forts around Jerusalem. Nebuchadnezzar, Cushite, Babylonian, Ethiopian king, Hamite. And the city was besieged. Until the eleventh year of King Zedekiah. And on the ninth day of the fourth month, the famine prevailed in the city. The ninth month of the fourth, the ninth day of the fourth month, the famine prevailed in the city. Food shortage. No food. And there was no bread for the people of the land. No food. You know, they, they put sanctions and embargoes on the city today. That's what he did. And the city was broken up. And all the men of war fled by night, by the way of the gate between two walls. Men of war got up out of there, which is by the king's garden. Now the Chaldeans, who are another name for the Babylonians, Ethiopians, Cushites, were against the city round about. Remember he said they had bought forts against it round about. So they was against the city round about. And the king went the way toward the plain. And the army of the Chaldeans pursued after the king and overtook him in the plains of Jericho and all his army was scattered from him. So they took the king and brought him up to the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, to Rimla, and they gave judgment upon him. They judged him. 
And they slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes. See? Killed his sons before, before his eyes. Man. And put out the eyes of Zedekiah and bound him with fetters of brass and carried him to Babylon. See? That's something. Uh, see how they killed his sons? Killed his sons. Go to uh, Ecclesiastes 30. We'll start at verse 3. He that teaches his son, it's Ecclesiastes 30, Ecclesiasticus 30 and 3. He that teaches his son, grieveth the enemy. And before his friends, he shall rejoice of him. Teach your son, you're going to grieve the enemy. And before his friends, he's going to rejoice at his son. Though his father die, yet he is as though he were not dead. See, though his father die, it's going to be as if his father never died. Like he's not dead. For he hath left one behind him that is like himself. See? That's why you see in verse 7 of 2 Kings 25th chapter, and they slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes. See? Ecclesiastes 30 and 3, verse 4. Though his father die, yet he is not, he, excuse me, yet he is as though he were not dead. For he have left one behind him that is like himself. See? So that's why you look at uh, why they would kill the sons. While he lived, he saw and rejoiced in him. And when he died, he was not sorrowful. He left behind him an avenger. I'll read it again. He left behind him an avenger against his enemies and one that shall requite kindness to his friends. See? So that's a known fact. That's why you see in 2 Kings 25, and seven, and they slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes, before he died. Before he, I mean, before they blinded him at least, and put out the eyes of Zedekiah, and bound him with fetters of brass, and carried him to Babylon. Cold. See, that's real. Same thing as we go into. Per realm, you're going to see that the same thing happened to Haman, the wicked Edomite that was trying to have us put to death as the Israelites. And Esther risked her life that we could be saved. They hung his sons on the gallows that he had made for Mordecai. They hung his sons on them. So this is what happened. So me looking at, uh, most I say, you're going to rule this out.